I need help and I need it kind of fast. I'm scared to death right now and I don't have anybody at all to talk to, so I'm turning to you. These are the words of a pregnant teenager in pre-Roe versus Wade, Ohio, writing to a group that provided referrals for safe, affordable, underground abortion providers. Given the rhetoric of the modern abortion debate and who is expected to take which side, it's safe to assume that any Christian activism of the late 60s and early 70s would have been anti-abortion, right? But there's a chapter in the history of abortion rights in the United States that is often overlooked, and that's the story of the organization that this young woman was writing to. When she and the many women like her didn't know where to turn for help getting an abortion, they contacted Clergy Consultation Service. That's right, clergy. It started in 1966 when Reverend Finley Schaaf was asked by a mother at his Methodist church in Greenwich Village for help obtaining an abortion for her teenage daughter. He didn't know how to help. He discussed the problem with Reverend Howard Moody, the American Baptist pastor at Judson Memorial Church just down the street. The situation at the time was just... It was horrible, Moody said in a 2001 interview. What women had to go through, you know, a phone call, meet in a parking lot in Patterson, New Jersey at 10 o'clock at night, take them in a car to somewhere they didn't know where. It was the most humiliating, frightening prospect for women that you can imagine. This was happening across the country, and it was in response to this crisis that the Clergy Consultation Service was created on May 22, 1967, by 19 Protestant ministers and two rabbis. The news made the front page of the New York Times, where it was explained the services would include assistance in obtaining legal therapeutic abortions and advice on such alternatives as keeping the child or having him put up for adoption. The Protestant clergy united across denominational lines, from Methodist and Presbyterian to Unitarian and Episcopalian. The CCS operated out of Judson Memorial Church, which now stores the history of the CCS in its archives. Women could schedule an appointment on an answering machine, and even though abortion was almost entirely illegal, that answering machine's number was openly advertised through mass media and word of mouth. The organization grew, and advertisements explained that the CCS grew out of a common concern for humane and compassionate counseling for women with problem pregnancies. If a woman could not attain a legal abortion in one of the few states that made exception for rape, incest, or threat to a woman's health, the most the service could publicly promise is that they will try to get the woman the best medical advice to take care of her problem pregnancy. Judson's administrator, Arlene Carmen, trained clergy in how to talk to women about abortion care. Carmen would also screen doctors who were referred to CCS, often posing as a pregnant woman, to investigate. The CCS acted as a review board for women who often had no other way of knowing if the abortion provider they found was legitimate or not. In one 1968 memo, CCS members were warned that in one location, women had been approached on the streets outside of his office, and that these strangers offered to take them to another person, who allegedly works with the doctor they expected to meet. Later in the memo, CCS members are reminded that no woman over 12 weeks are to be referred to Juan M. The clergy did their best to facilitate quality care, but the relationship they had with abortion providers were often shaky, as shown in a memo from a month earlier explaining that angels' prices go up to $700 if the woman is beyond eight weeks. Information like this often came from the women reporting back, and new contacts were acquired through word of mouth. Primary documents like these highlight a Christian response to abortion in the pre-Roe United States that has largely been forgotten. They also tell individual stories, like that of Juan M. In May of 68, he's the contact for women over eight weeks. In June of that same year, he is not available for contact for women over 12 weeks, and in July, he's dropped from the CCS's referral service altogether. The service kept an updated negative list of dangerous abortion providers women should avoid. Specific warnings include danger of infection, expensive, filthy, dirty, and arrested. One provider was even called a butcher, avoid at all costs. When the CCS was first deciding the commitments of the clergy members, they acknowledged the possibility of illegal action and of being accomplices in criminal proceedings. They gambled that the invasion of the sanctity of the pastoral counseling relationship will not be attempted, and they were mostly right. Around this time, the CCS was lobbying the New York State Legislature to repeal laws criminalizing abortion. Abortion was legalized in New York on April 9, 1970, by just one vote. The final roll call showed a tie. As the Speaker of the House raised his gavel to announce the bill's defeat, George Michaels asked for the floor. Mr. Speaker. Michaels. Assemblyman George Michaels represented a predominantly Roman Catholic district. 
His constituents expected him to vote against the bill, which he did. I had hoped that this would never come to pass. I fully appreciate that this is the termination of my political career, but what's the use of getting elected or re-elected if you don't stand for something? I cannot, in good conscience, stand here and be the vote that defeats this bill. I therefore request you, Mr. Speaker, to change my negative vote to an affirmative vote. The CCS then expanded their services to provide women with information on how to utilize the new law. CCS counselors in other states could now refer women to safe, legal abortion providers in New York. By January 22, 1973, more than 1,000 clergy members across the nation were participating in the Clergy Consultation Service, which would eventually evolve into the Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice, an organization still active today. On their website is a list of prayers, including one for women with problem pregnancies, which reads, Help them, gracious God, to find wise counsel if they choose to seek it, understanding friends if they choose to tell their story, caring clergy if they want to explore the morality of their choices, but most of all, give them strength to meet what they must face. Amen.